Hi guys, it's Professor Dave. Let's talk about aromaticity. He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. In organic chemistry, we frequently refer to certain compounds as being aromatic. This terminology came about in a time when we noticed pleasant odors emanating from certain compounds isolated from natural oils produced by plants. Now, it wasn't until much later that we understood that this property is actually due to the presence of uh, fully conjugated, unsaturated ring systems. So when we, ter when we use that terminology now, we're referring to just that. We're referring to the molecular structure. Uh, and so the most common of these structures is benzene. And so let's take a look at what we mean by that. So if we remember from uh, what we were discussing about resonance, we have this molecule here, we have three pi bonds, and we notice that they are conjugated, meaning we have this alternating double bond, single bond uh, system, and so uh, these are now fully delocalized. They're not just delocalized about a portion of the molecule, they are actually delocalized around the entire molecule. So we have these two uh, <clears throat> different uh, resonance structures for benzene, and we can see that uh, given that in, uh, in, in each of the two resonance structures, there is a double bond at every uh, single possible position between them. And so that means that uh, recalling the fact that these actually do not exist, uh, but is actually the composite resonance structure that is real. So benzene really looks like this, where we have partial pi electron density all about the ring. So that's what we mean when we talk about a ring system that is uh, fully conjugated and unsaturated. So that is a prerequisite for aromaticity. It's not only benzene that is aromatic, but it's the most common example. And so what we want to do now is take a look at some rules to help us determine whether a molecule is or is not aromatic. So let's take a look at the rules for aromaticity. Number one, the ring system in question must be fully planar. So looking at something like this, there's a portion here that is sp3 hybridized and therefore has tetrahedral geometry. So there are groups that are projecting uh, in and out of the board. So that is not fully planar. We must remember that only the carbons that are sp2 hybridized will have trigonal planar geometry and therefore can be, uh, the molecule could be considered planar. So the entire molecule must be planar. Uh, number two, the system must be fully conjugated. So while uh, in addition to the fact that these are sp3 hybridized carbons, uh, also these pi bonds are not situated in a way that makes the system conjugated. Remember that at least here there is some delocalization of these pi electrons because they are arranged in the appropriate fashion, alternating double bond and single bond. Here these are too far apart for these to be uh, conjugated, so this could not qualify as aromatic. And then the last thing is that the number of pi electrons uh, present that are delocalized must obey Huckel's rule. And Huckel's rule is as follows. We have this term 4n plus 2 where n could be any integer. And for whatever integer you put into Huckel's rule, it spits out a value for a number of pi electrons that are delocalized that will generate an aromatic system. So that sounds more complicated than it is. Let's put in any integer let's say zero. If n equals zero, four times zero plus two equals two. That means that a system with two pi electrons could be aromatic. Uh, let's put in the number one, then we'll have four plus two or six. That means that six is a number of pi electrons in the system that could uh, promote aromaticity. So we end up with this, two, six, ten, fourteen. Okay, and, and so forth. And so uh, those are the values uh, that allow for aromaticity when we're looking at the number of pi electrons that are delocalized within the system. So 4, 8, 12, etc. those, uh, even if the molecule is fully planar and fully conjugated, will not be aromatic. So let's take a look at a couple of examples and apply these rules and see if we can predict which are going to be aromatic and which are going to be anti-aromatic. So let's take a look at some examples. So first of all, we have this uh, three-membered ring here, and uh, this is fully planar, and it is fully conjugated, because we have a carbocation up here, so that makes that sp2 hybridized and planar, and it is fully conjugated, because we can move this single pi bond around the molecule. We can push that here, which would then neutralize this charge and leave the cation there, and then push the pi bond over here, neutralizing that and leaving that there. So we could have three resonance structures 
of this molecule uh, with the cation moving uh, amongst each carbon. Therefore, this pi bond is truly delocalized around the entire molecule. So a single pi bond here is actually fully conjugated around the molecule. So the first two criteria are satisfied. And then in addition, it is only two pi electrons that are involved in resonance. Two is a number that satisfies Huckel's rule. So this is an aromatic compound. So that works. Now over here, we look at uh, a couple of examples involving four pi electrons that are delocalized. So over here, this is a fully planar molecule. These are all sp2 hybridized carbon, so it is a completely flat molecule. Uh, and it is fully conjugated. There is an additional resonance structure where we push these pi bonds to uh, these two positions. So it is planar and fully conjugated. However, uh, there are four pi electrons involved in resonance, and that does not satisfy Huckel's rule. So this is not going to be aromatic. It's going to be anti-aromatic. And then the same goes uh, over here for this five-membered ring. There's a cation here. So we can draw uh, five, actually five different resonance structures where the cation is on all of the uh, different carbons and the pi bonds move accordingly. However, once again, there are only four pi electrons involved. That does not satisfy Huckel's rule. So this is not going to be aromatic. Uh, then we look over here, we already know about benzene, but just to, uh, just to reiterate, uh, we do have a situation that is fully planar. These are all sp2 hybridized carbons, so the implied hydrogens are actually in the plane of the board. It's fully planar and it is fully conjugated. There is one more uh, resonance structure here where the pi bonds are in the other positions. And uh, looking at the number of pi electrons, we have two, four, six pi electrons, remembering that uh, e uh, every single uh, bond, every single covalent bond has two electrons. So when we're looking at one pi bond, we know that there are two pi electrons involved. So two per bond, we have three bonds, that's six pi electrons. That does satisfy Huckel's rule. So that is going to be aromatic as we already knew. And then over here, we have the same situation as before, but now we have an anion instead of a cation. And so remember that it is not just uh, pi bonds that can participate in resonance, it is also lone pairs. So this negative charge implies the presence of an additional pair of electrons that are also delocalizable because they are pi electrons. And so this negative charge could uh, go here and generate a pi bond there, pushing this here, pushing this around, uh, et cetera. So we, again, could have five different resonance structures of this molecule. And uh, um, so it is fully uh, delocalizable. It is fully conjugated. And now we have two, four, six pi electrons instead of four. This is a cation, an absence of a lone pair. This is an anion, the presence of a lone pair. So there are six pi electrons here, and uh, that does satisfy Huckel's rule. <clears throat> now, uh, let's take a look at some of these uh, heterocyclic uh, compounds. So heterocyclic meaning that there are elements other than carbon within the actual ring structure. So some of them have nitrogen, uh, the furan has oxygen, uh, the thiophene has sulfur. And now these can also be aromatic because these atoms have lone pairs that may or may not be involved in resonance if they are needed to be in order to generate aromaticity. aromaticity is a highly stabilizing feature for a molecule, so if it can do it, it will. But uh, the tricky part here is that available lone pairs uh, need only contribute to resonance if they need to. So for example, here with pyridine, this lone pair doesn't need to be involved in resonance in order to generate aromaticity, so we just ignore it. These three pi bonds are going to be able to uh, delocalize and generate aromaticity on their own. However, in this situation, and actually all of these situations, one lone pair, or the only one available here for this nitrogen atom, will be needed in, or, in able to generate aromaticity. Over here, one of the two, and in this case as well, one of the two lone pairs will be incorporated into the resonance in order to generate aromaticity. And in each of these cases, it will then therefore be six pi electrons, two uh, pi bonds and one lone pair uh, that will be involved. And therefore, that does satisfy Huckel's rule. And that's why all of these compounds are also aromatic. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. And as always, feel free to email me with questions, professordaveexplains at gmail.com.